Howdy lovelies, how are you all doing? Welcome back today to our crafting where we learn, grow and craft together. The session today is using that vintage tape that we made the other day and I think maybe a collage of some sort just to incorporate it in there. Now we know that it's vintage and of course I will have a vintage theme then going with today's session. Let's dive right into it. So we made these tapes the other day. Yes, I did tell you I don't have brown, but we all know that red and green makes brown. I added a bit of yellow there. You can see there's a bit more yellow in. And then I added a few more where there's a bit of the brown that still came in into play here. And the rest is just yellow, which is fine. It's okay. We're going to incorporate it. So I've just stored it like this. Yes, it might just, um, you can see this folded over. It's not an issue. We can just cut that off or include it. We just go with the flow. So I'm thinking of using some journal cards. It can be later made into pockets, just the way that we glue it down in our journal. I'm going to put this to one side for the moment. So previously I showed you how I make my own card bases, then round the corners, even with tags. This one I see is a tiny little bit of a corner there instead of a roundness. So just going to sort of fix that for myself. I could have just popped it right into the corner rounder again and just re do that. Let's see if that will work. Um, it is the blue one, not the purple one. So there we have that. Let's see. Let's see. I'm not completely satisfied with, with that. See, it's just taking off a tiny bit of that and makes it more rounded. Maybe the way that I had cut it, I did not cut it straight down apparently it's not the end of the world let's see if this one has got something that's bothering me too not so much all right let's continue with that these little punches are always close by let's start vintage photo i want to start yeah let's do vintage or do i want ground espresso let's see tea dye let's see some tea dye Tea dye is a little bit more red. Obviously, it's got that name tells us that it is a little bit more of a reddish color, orangey, so warmer tones. Be careful when you are inking directly onto your, you can stamp and drag it onto your projects. I don't mind the unevenness. It's part of the vintage look. Yes, it will be better if you stamp on the side. I'll just move this in. Maybe move the ink there so I can move this into view for you. And just, like I said, I don't mind the unevenness. If that bothers you, you could always use a dome applicator. That's a whole lot easier to use. I like the look of that. Let's do the next one. I just want to turn it over. This time that I re-ink my vintage photo, it takes a few dabs before there's some ink on the applicator. Though it's still fine for me, but probably soon I will have to just add a bit of ink to the stamp pad. Going to use a variety of well, possibly I can't say right at this stage. Variety of Tom Holter stamps. You know, I love using those. And we will work still on the background. So that's Distress Ink in tea dye. So, next step. What would be the next step? I can't tell you. We will see right now. Um, I think I want to do a border in a darker brown. Um, let's do this one. It's a set of Tom Holtz as well. And um, what is it called? Lego frames. It's in this 264. I'll take the larger one. I'm going to add it onto my stamp block. And then ink this up. Let's see if we can get this to line up. Now, this will be a bit tricky. I'm going to try, and yes, the corners are square, but let's see if I can get it in there. And I've 
got some ink on my fingers now. There we go. That one works. Now I just want to get that ink off there and do the next one. I don't want it precisely a clear stamp or a crisp stamped image. I specifically want the blotchiness, which will just contribute to the vintage feel. And there we have that one also. Love the look of that. Just want to clean this little stamp a little bit. Easily done. Just wipe it off. Yes, if you don't clean it, it stains. But eventually your stamps will be stained from frequent use. Just uh, with wipe, baby wipe. It works perfectly well to clean it. And there we have that. We can add it back there. Now, so the frames are done. That's one step. That is one step closer to where we want to be. Just putting the stamp block away. Now, next step, I really truly don't know what else I want to do with the next steps, other than having a play. I want to incorporate some vintage photos of some sort. Let's get some stenciling going. Let's see. What will we use? I always like that one, just because it, it shows a bit of... And now I didn't dip my ink blending tool into ink again. I just want to get that bit off there. And of course, you know me, I'll be going on to vintage photo now. So now for some stamping, and your stamping can be anything really. Um, what do I have here? I don't want to have the same things exactly the same. So let's just stamp that. Almost stamped on the exact same one. This is from the warehouse district. That stamp and that one. And I'm going on to another set, which is the etc. set. And I'm using this small little stamp. And I don't want the complete stamp, I just want something here. There we go. And I maybe can add that to the rest of it. Just a bit there. And I almost need that journal card right into the ink. A bit of numbers. Now we can go to a total different color just to liven things up a bit. Maybe a darker color. Could have been in red, you could have done it in any color that you want. I just would like to get the ink off. I like this one, but I do want to put that in a different color. And for that, I'll use a, yeah, an archival ink. So let's go to Bondor. And I'm going to add that there. 
just for a different look. It always helps to just change your ink colors. I still have that piece of wax paper around here with the same colors. Let me just move it out of the way for the moment. Now we can maybe use some tiny, tiny things. Maybe that. Maybe it's a bit for that one in a clock, I think. Let's see how that goes. Top hat in black because I've got the black here right next to me. And I'll add it to that one where the gentleman is. That works fine. And then the clock, maybe in a blue, dark blue, which is price ribbon. And I do realize I'm out of view here. Just inking that up. I don't have all the big ones yet. I just have the normal ones, archival ink, which is black suit, hickory smoke, ground espresso, and vintage photo. So I'm going to add that there. Just bearing in mind, more or less, where I want to put the photo, because I want to add photos. So this one, again, a postage stamp. Let's see, um, let's do evergreen bowl. sure where I want it. Let's do it this side to the bottom right. And yes, I'm out of view, but there we have that one in the green as well. Now to add our vintage photos. I am thinking about using, let's see what, I'm not sure yet. I think the ideology photo book photos, it's strips of three photos. I'm thinking of using that top one. I'm going to cut it off and the gentleman in the middle. I just want to space it out so that I can use the others as well again. Those can easily be added. I'm thinking he would look too cute there, but we might have to add something else. And I'm thinking of adding that lady maybe to there. So let's see. And yes, you can use part of it and all of it and whatever you decide. Um, let's see quickly. I'm just trying to make up my mind for another set of stamps to use. A go-to set that I use quite often is the sets that I normally use or often use, frequently use, is the eccentric number CNS448. Lovely set. And I'll just take this one stamp out that I want to use. Now, there's quite a few that is quite cute to use in various situations. Now, I don't want to ink up this hole. I just want a part of the stamp. Do not want ink on the glass, but of the stamp, just making sure there's no ink there. So I want her photos sort of there. Maybe there. So I'm going to, and I just see that this is cute, but it's a bit too late now. There we go, identification card. And then we need a little bit in the background, and that's easily done with the set. I use a few little stars. That's always a good filler stamp to use. And of course, we will add the photo with our tape. Not only just, but definitely. Bit of color there. That can be used. Now let's just put some numbers or something at the bottom of that. There's no other serial number or anything there. Let's do those two. That will be perfect. It will really look like an identification thing. And I just need to get this out. There we go. So... Now, where did I put... Sometimes things can disappear right in front of me. I was now looking for the stamp block. And department. More or less centered. Let's do that like that. I think that will look good. Let's just get that ink off. Department. And there we add it. Looks like an employee number and the department number there as well. I think that is cool. Now, let's see. Before we add our photos, I want to keep that together. Let's finish this one off. And here we will be using some travel something. Let's see what can we add there. And it keeps falling out now because I did not put it in properly. 
get to do a stop ticket. I use ticket quite frequently. Maybe a bit of red, just to liven things up a bit. That's a nice one. Crisp and clear. Let's just see that. We need something this side. Let's take that stamp. We've got a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue. Let's do another black stamp. I do like that. And now let's see if that is full enough. Let's get a number to that side or something there. Not sure what. Not sure what. You know what? Let's do the little stars, but red this time. And that makes the world of difference. I think. So now the next step, sorry I closed that in your ears, next step will be to add the photos. I am going to add some glue just to make sure it stays put and then I'll do the final touches with the tape, which is the reason we're doing this session today, is to show what we do with the tape. And why do I do it like that? I had quite a few people ask me, but what do you do with the things that you, that you make? And it was of course a very good question, very valid, so I need to show you what I do with it, just so that you have ideas as well. Now, this one needs to fit in there. And there we have that. We need something there, though. Let's see what we can put there. Something that will fit. Let's do tag number. It gives a little star as well. And we need red, just to finalize this all. And this, of course, is one door. That worked out well. That's glued down. And now for the final touches of adding the tape. In the previous session, I had shown you how to make vintage or faux vintage tape, which we often see. And now it's going to make a noise. Sorry for that. We can take some. This one totally cold. I want to see if I can actually. Yes, we can. So I'm going to just take a strip. That is just adorable. I love the way that that looks. Was done with, with alcohol ink. I didn't have brown, so I have added, or mixed rather, red and green. And I had added a bit of yellow. These ones were just the yellow, but I think it, it absolutely came out awesome. And it's got that yellow effect of the tape. And now just to, I think it needs a little bit there and a little bit there, even small pieces, just to supposedly help it stick down. this tiny bit now. Remember this is just for decor. It's not holding it. I want a piece there. So let's take another piece, a little strip and just cut a bit off there. And I folded that one in. Let's see if we can. Look, it is what it is. I just want to use a card and just burnish that. That one has got some wrinkles, but there we have it. Last step is just to Ink the edges. Now 
And if you look at that, you will never say that it was ordinary white cardstock that had been transformed into this vintage looking pieces. There we have it. I think these two cards really came out nice. The white, yes, there's some ink which was on my fingers, but it doesn't bother me. You can now glue this down onto a page as a pocket. It can be added. You can make it into a little booklet. You can even glue the two together and make it a pocket by itself. It can be included anywhere in your journals. Thank you for joining me today in making these lovely journal cards. That is identification cards in essence. Hope you enjoyed it. If you go and try this for yourself, please tag Wobble Crafting on social media. If you want to see more content like this, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I'll appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel too. If you haven't done so yet, hit that little notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content. See you back soon. Goodbye.